So we're going to now go to our next um, speaker. And our next speaker is Nancy Haig. She's from the USA. She went to Michigan Music Festival, the Women's Music Festival, and says it gave her such immense gifts of togetherness, belonging and safety, where she no longer felt alone. Throughout her life as a social worker, love of all people and animals, she has attempted to give back to life many good things um, that were given to her by her parents and others. This summer, Nancy planned a music festival and she's going to tell us the story um, of the planning of that festival and what happened. So thank you so much for coming to tell us this, Nancy, and over to you. Hi, it's good to be here. My name is Nancy and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. I grew up in a very supportive family, full of love, faith, higher education, music and advocacy. I felt my safety and privacy was important to my parents. However, I found myself becoming a young gay girl who had no one that would be able to understand. I had no one to talk to. I did not belong in a world that was full of straight, sexually explicit expectations. Then I learned that all boys were not safe. I, like many other girls, had consensual sex rights taken from me in such ways as date rape and child stranger. At 17, I found the love of my life, but then we were forced to be apart by Miles. She was ripped away to ensure that no further sexual deviation occurred. <clears throat> it wasn't until I met other gay women like myself that I felt like I belonged. The only places existing were the lesbian and gay bars. <clears throat> we had to fight off the vice squad, hiding on our toilets to keep from being arrested by men in uniform invading our space. Then there was the Michigan Women's Music Festival beginning in 1976. I first attended in 1978. They gave me a sense of belonging and sisterhood that never felt before. I felt like I had truly found a home. It grew from year to year by coming from 5,000 to 8,000 women. We would feel our stories, our music, and our experiences transforming us. The festival gave us so much strength Again. again, which was less friendly. Many of our mothers came to our day, working on social issues, the ERA, and going to Washington for several protests. I was also a musician for 15 years, performing in different bands. The best and most loved was my love for music has always been within me. I later found racehorses and enjoyed 20 years of my life working as a groom seven days a week, listening and loving horses and keeping us both fit. Then one of my closest friends and her, her family encouraged me to come to their family farm. Her aunt's trail riding business was so welcoming and embracing of women, children, and ADD and AIDS. She completely opened it up for any women wanting to not only did they have 1,800 acres, but cabins, fire circle, a veranda for musicians, camping sites, a trailer for cars, and a backup. I invited a few meetup groups when we met with other women who became very fond of experience. Last year, I did Michigan Family Reunion. As the Ohio Lesbian Festival had dissolved, I became concerned with having more of these revived. I decided to see if a full faith effort could lead us to a Kentucky Women's Music Festival. Many of my friends said, oh no, don't do that. It'll be months and months of work. But I could feel that this was an opportunity. When I asked my horse friend, she fully opened up her farm to raise the future of a women's festival. I began asking some of my devoted and dedicated women musicians if they would be part of it. I received overwhelming support and were more than ready to help. I set up a Facebook page similar to Michigan Family. Everyone was welcome to invite their friends. I have always been an inclusive person. That's how I was raised. More and more hope for it to become a woman born festival. I began to reconsider knowing that the amount of older lesbians who like me would feel more secure and safe 
in a woman born only space. I then made that part of my page's description. I resourced and obtained more musicians willing to make a go of it. My gay guy friend, Jeff, stepped up and made all sorts of flyers. I passed them out at the Cincinnati Pride Festival and obtained the names and numbers of many vendors. The Facebook group grew to 100. I then advertised on the Michigan Family Reunion Festival page and the Big Mouth Festival pages. Many of their colleagues and organizers got back in touch with me offering tremendous support for the Women Born Women Festival. Friends I'd also met at MFR jumped wholeheartedly on board to do the sound, perform, and provide workshops. The community was hungry, I could see. With it reaching many festival goers, many well-known musicians and entertainers began to contact me. I received a call from Karen Williams, a nationally known comedian. I was totally surprised. Then we added her as well as the Troubadours, a feminist duo who are very well received. That meant we had a poetic flow, an awesome African-American poet who describes her true wor words and her experiences, Priffy Town, an amazing Appalachian duo from Southern Kentucky, Jade Green, a rock and roll musician who has had many years of performing, UBU, an Alabama band that play a lot of R&B, Chris Woodbury, a viola player, Rita Beach, who can sing anything and almost everything, Chandler Carter, another blues and R&B performer that is lesbian, and Ma Crow, an Appalachian duo that sing a lot of ballads. Our membership on the page then went over 300. My longtime friend developed a beautiful website. I organized a meetup to find volunteer coordinators. Some issues began to arise. Some were not in favor of a woman born woman festival. Chris, the viola player, decided she could not support a non-transgender affirming festival. So did another young woman who had hoped to be the co-administrator. I was told over and over it should be trans inclusive, yet some carried on helping to do my vendor network and to help me write my vendor applications. We visited the land again and clarified the farm was in support of a woman born women's festival. We worked on food preparations, lighting and porta johns. I traveled to Frankfurt, our state capital and set up our gathering as a nonprofit business. Trail riding was added to the website. Tickets were ready to go. I was not aware of the needs that can arise for vetting group memberships. My questions for joining included, why would you like this festival? And two, would a woman born woman festival be agreeable to you? Those who were invited by others did not have to answer these. The trust that I had put in the process began to be our demise. Because we were in the heart of the Bible Belt, we mistakenly thought our oppressors would be local. However, the threat came from within. Of the many people invited, some were trans allies from the open city of Louisville. I began receiving requests to know if this was a trans affirming event. My response was that it was definitely women born women welcoming. With this response, I began receiving very hateful comments accusing me of being transphobic and an ignorant person. I was accused of exclusionism and ex discrimination. The same individual rallied others who posted negative comments of disapproval. She went on to suggest she was certain the troubadours would no longer want to perform for us. She said, they surely won't want to play for you. I promptly called them and to confirm their engagement still. Within two days, they advised me they could no longer perform. Their boycott, her boycott had been successful. And then she inquired, where is this thing going to be held? A question we didn't answer. However, the owner felt should remain on the link for the horseback riding trail reservations. We went on ahead and began our ticket sales. But within a days, my friend, the farm owner, received constant calls threatening her with a boycott of her business to take down her ADD children's camp. She said that she was being blackballed. She received all these threats while attending a funeral. She said, 
the callers were concerned that the transgender musician would not be able to perform. Her farm then had a boarding meeting and voted no longer to sponsor our Women Born Women Only Festival. As subsequently, and subsequently, the farm board posted their policy towards helping all children at risk with issues and those with any kind of gender identity issues. And so that's how it ended. I remain indebted to the many experienced women who gave all they had to support me, including Olivia Records, Falcon River, Ruth Barrett, and Chris Fulton. I recommend the reading of Disappearing L, as well as Ruth Barrett's Dossier, The Lesbian Erasure. I must say my friends were right. This festival planning took way over two months. I was fortunate enough to get it completed as well as I did. Many rights and many days went into this, responding to every Facebook post, membership request, potential vendor, musicians, workshop leaders, those trying to steer me in the best direction, taking care of the website, food preparation, Porta Jones, licensing, and more. It was all a very involved process. Unfortunately, I had very little help but those who, few who were helpful were incredible. I also appreciate so much of what everyone did. My lawyer said that we could fight this if we were able to show a loss of funding and we came up with $5,000. Looking forward for further land, once again, we are pushed aside. I recently felt like I had an opportunity to use the YMCA camp in Northern Kentucky as that has been what had supported the Ohio Lesbian Festival at the end of their time. But that fell through. They did not like the fact that we have had a prior problem. I uh, also wanted to say that I keep going over in my head what I could have done different and how <clears throat> disappointed many women have been from this. I want to express my grief over that and some of uh, the positiveness to come out of this discussion today, I'm hoping for. I feel the issues we as women, born women and those of us that desire that space and because of safety, um, that we recognize that that is not uh, anything in my behalf anyway to want this space other than it truly makes me feel more secure. Um, I also like to um, sometimes sit and think, what is it that the trans person really can't get? And why do they like to be invading instead of respectful? Um, I just can't figure out how to reach these people. Um, so I go over that in my head a lot because I've always been a person to want to reach people. Um, and I have also wanted to see if there could be some discussion on what differences there are in the trans allies and the trans people themselves. Because the whole time my page was up, I never really heard from a trans, uh, but one time. And uh, anyway, that's the end of my discussion. I'm so grateful that you embraced me. Thank you so much.